Good afternoon. My name is Scott Weatherwax from Component Distributors. We're happy to be sponsoring the Adventsense webinar this afternoon on motion tracking solutions for emerging applications and wearable sensors by Renga Shinivasan. Before we get started, a few comments. Renga's presentation is about 30 to 45 minutes long. After that, we have a 15 minutes or so of questions and answers. Uh, a number of people have sent in questions prior to today's presentations. Thank you very much. We're hoping that many of these will be answered during the lecture, but if not, Rangel will try to address some of these at the very end. Also, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the control panel on the side of the GoTo sidebar to send in your questions, and we'll make sure those get funneled to, to Renga. If you think of any other questions after you've left the presentation, please feel free to go ahead and email those to me at scott.weatherwax at cdiweb.com. Let's go ahead and get started. Renga, go ahead. Hey, Scott, thanks for the introduction. I would like to welcome you all for this uh, webinar titled uh, Motion Tracking Solutions for a Wearable Sensor. I'd like to thank uh, CDI for uh, hosting this. Right, um, without wasting much time, uh, we'll get started right away with uh, our Motion Apps uh, embedded platform, delving into the market size, applications, and market requirements. The main focus of this webinar will center around the details of our embedded solution, where we'll have lots of good information to share. We'll briefly introduce the 6050, our latest and greatest uh, six-axis uh, uh, gyroscope and accelerometer, a single dial solution, uh, uh, which we have just transitioned to mass production, ponder to you know, what problems have we solved uh, with this product. Then there will be a roadmap piece, which will be more of an eye chart uh, of what our software solution has to offer. We'll briefly touch upon the developer corner and give you a sneak peek at a wearable sensor SDK that we are targeting for uh, general public release uh, towards the end of the year. <coughs> Most of the registrants uh, have uh, asked a few questions uh, during the time of registration that they would like to see answered during this uh, webinar. Uh, what I have done is I tried to prepare answers for those that were uh, submitted uh, you know, prior and uh, we'll answer those, but uh, I'm sure there will be more that you have during this webinar, so feel free to enter it. Uh, in the way that you know Scott, you know, wanted this to be addressed, and uh, you know, make sure that uh, I'll try to get you an answer either during the session today, or if that's not possible, over email. So, what are the uh, some of the key uh, high volume embedded applications that are expected to embrace uh, motion processing? Now, we're quite excited by what we are seeing in the uh, motion remote space. Now, the TV experience uh, is changing. Now, the TV guide of today has more than a couple of hundred channels to select and choose from. Now, navigating the screen with a traditional uh, up, down, left, right kind of remote control is going to be challenging. What the users want is the intuitiveness of uh, point and click, command and control, that's further aided by motion gestures. Now, the wearable sensors for health and fitness is another application that's seeing you know high interest level. What you see today in the market is uh, uh, athletic shoes uh, embedded with accelerometer that uh, would allow the user to keep track of his uh, fitness metric. Now, taking this use case to the next level is uh, you know wearable sensors with uh, gyroscopes that can uh, track rotational movements for evaluating the fitness and uh, wellness data. Now, a new ecosystem is uh, developing around a motion-based uh, wristwatch form factor device that can now pair to your uh, smartphone and can provide critical alerts. Now, sports kinetics applications that's actually showed uh, on this chart here uh, for sports such as golf and tennis, uh, racket swing analysis is another area that we see a uh, lot of applications picking up momentum. Now, gyroscope enables toys such as helicopters uh, is also another one where the gyro is provided is providing more of a flight stability. Now, what you see uh, in this chart is uh, data that was published by Yo Development uh, earlier part of the year, 
Now this shows, shows a five-year uh, market size uh, projection, and where we are in 2011 is uh, barely at the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's kind of a hockey stick kind of uh, growth curve, which is what uh, you know uh, what we want to see. And uh, those market segments that they, I just described are being uh, categorized into three broader segments. And if you see uh, in the next couple of years, the total volume of uh, embedded devices that will be shipped into these three market segments will be anywhere between 230 to 240 million units. And that's a very nice number that we should all feel excited about. <clears throat> now, from a solution requirement perspective, the target markets uh, that we uh, want to cover for embedded would be anything that's non-handset and non-tablet where a microcontroller is at the heart of the processing. Now, these devices typically don't have a sophisticated uh, resources for computing and storage. Now, the code base uh, has to be targeted to run on 32-bit micros, uh, all the way down to low-end 8-bit microcontrollers as well. To give you one example uh, of how the storage limitation is applicable to our embedded product, but not our handset product, is uh, Typically, the motion processing software on the handset will have, you know, all the, you know, libraries from the Compass vendors uh, integrated into the software code base. But for the embedded solution, we barely have uh, the footprint, uh, you know, needed to just integrate the particular Compass uh, library that is going to be the one that's going to be used in the application. Now, one of the many ways we typically have to bring down the code size is targeting some of what I would like to call, you know, floating point specific algorithms, uh, which require, you know, a higher uh, code usage to fix the point uh, DSP. Now, the software also has to be architected to run in a compute platform that has uh, uh, no operating system. So those are the, you know, typical requirements from a, from an application perspective. Now, <clears throat> what's uh, What's new in uh, embedded motion apps? So I think our much awaited uh, MPU 6050 is uh, uh, now transitioned into mass production. We had a press announcement that went out on uh, September the 13th. It basically announced to the world that we are shipping these uh, parts to volume customers. What we have done uh, with this product is uh, that uh, we basically raised the bar in integration uh, by providing a single uh, die level uh, six axes, that's basically a three axis gyroscope and an accelerometer on the on the same die in the same footprint of four by four by zero point nine millimeter. But really a lot of our competitors are offering a three axis gyroscope alone in the equivalent footprint. <coughs> that shows you how far we are ahead uh, against the competition. Now you know there's all other solutions available out there that uh, that's what you call a package level package level integration by putting uh, two dies in the same package, and uh, by actually integrating at the die level, we have solved what is called uh, you know a cross axis alignment problem. To give you one an example, you know a one degree alignment error at the PCB inside a package can uh, manifest itself as a you know six degree heading error for a pedestrian navigation or if you're a pointer application, you'll see like a pronounced uh, settling time of the cursor. And uh, one of the things with the MPU 6050 is that uh, it has an industry leading, you know, sub 3.8 milli milliampere active gyro current, which is about 30% lower than, you know, what others have to offer. <coughs> Somebody uh, uh, in this audience may be familiar that uh, we, we launched the embedded motion app software first back in May. Uh, at that point, the software support just included our uh, IME 3000. Now we have since transitioned support for uh, you know MPU 6050, and we also have uh, a 6050 based uh, sensor board for the ABR UC3, which is now offered on uh, you know Invincent's uh, web store. And uh, we also have added uh, nine access support to our 2.0 release, uh, which. Uh, in addition to providing, you know, uh, nine access uh, compass integration support through software, it also lowered the the code size from the previous, you know, 1.1. 1 
and where we are at right now with the coupon order is we are in at the top 25 kilobyte uh, you know footprint for for a six axis solution and uh, in addition we have added nine axis to uh, you know to supporting the AKM So we talked about the you know MP, MPU 6050 uh, being transitioning into mass production. So let's try to quickly run through you know what are the critical problems that we are trying to solve. So from an architecture perspective, we are basically transitioned from a six-axis uh, processing to a nine-axis processing by uh, integrating the gyro, Excel, and the DMP all on the same die. Now, from a noise spec perspective, uh, we have actually improved it by almost 50 percent both on the RMS noise and the rate noise and what this really does is uh, enhances the you know accuracy of pedestrian navigation and EIS and OIS uh, performance. Also the rate noise really puts the 6050 in a critical range for EIS application. So we talked about the power consumption and uh, basically what you see here is that uh, the gyro only current has basically uh, dropped from a you know, a full three axis 5.9 milliampere in our previous generation product to 3.6 milliampere. And what the basically uh, result is an enhanced, uh, you know, battery life for, uh, for, for your application. Now, a lot of our customers, uh, you know, give the feedback to us that the I2C on the 3050 did not uh, support, you know, a tri-stated uh, feature. You know, we listened to them and, uh, you know, guess what? Uh, we added the support uh, in 6050. You know, to summarize uh, uh, the 6050 features, uh, we can down now do a full nine-axis uh, sensor fusion, including uh, you know, compass integration and uh, quaternion generation, all of the DMP. And uh, now the, the 6050 gesture detection is uh, full interface, uh, all uh, natively done in the DMP, whereas in the earlier products, uh, we needed some help uh, on the application processor side. Now, one of the big advantages is that the secondary I2C bus now allows connection of up to four sensors, uh, including, you know, uh, the compass and the pressure sensors. So that gives you, you know, as the uh, the micro uh, application is moving towards more of a sensor hub kind of architecture, where you have, you know, a pressure sensor and maybe an ambient light sensor, maybe a touch sensor, all, uh, you know, interface to a sensor hub. So we believe that the 6050 can be the central processing uh, for such a embedded system. Now let's look at uh, the major components uh, of our solution. Uh, the, the two big silos uh, I would like to say are uh, motion fusion and calibration. Now motion fusion is basically you know, integrating the raw sensor data from uh, the gyro and the Excel and the compass and then 